In this video, let's talk about some useful results on differentiability. We already know what is a differentiable function and we already have studied the topic of always continuous functions in which we saw which kind of functions are always continuous. Now let's see which kind of functions are always differentiable so that you don't have to solve it all over again and you can apply some short tricks. So the first in the line is the polynomial function. So you have to learn these points and keep them in mind so that if at all you find any of these functions you don't have to solve and you just say that yes it is a differentiable function. So every polynomial function, every polynomial function is differentiable. It says that every polynomial function is differentiable at each x belongs to r which means real numbers. That means if I have a polynomial function like ax square plus bx plus c that is a polynomial function right. So I will say that it is differentiable at each x belongs to real numbers. You don't have to solve it all over again for differentiability. You don't have to check for right hand and left hand derivative. Simply you will solve it by the trick that yes I know polynomial functions are always differentiable. The next point is about the exponential function. So I underline exponential function and say exponential function is of the type a raised to the power x where a is greater than 0 this is nothing but the definition of exponential function. It says that exponential function is also differentiable at each x belongs to r. So basically these points will tell you that you have to keep in mind about polynomial, you have to keep in mind about exponential. Similarly, after keeping in mind those two, you have to also keep in mind any constant function. All the constant, constant functions like fx is equal to 5, fx is equal to 55, these all are what differentiable at each x belongs to r. Even these are differentiable. So three things that you have to remember till now, polynomial function always differentiable at each x belongs to r, exponential function also and similarly constant function also. The next is about logarithmic function. So I underline logarithmic function and it says that logarithmic function is differentiable at each point in its domain. Now log function you know is not defined for negative functions means negative values and not it is not defined for negative values and it has some respective domain. So logarithmic function you will have to check in the question what is the domain in that domain it will be always differentiable. After these four we have the fifth. The fifth is talking about what let's see it is telling some different products some difference and product some means addition difference means subtraction product means multiplication of two differentiable functions is differentiable that means it is talking about the algebra of differentiable functions in the algebra of differentiable functions you must know that if you take the sum or the difference or the product of any two differentiable functions it is always differentiable that means if I have a constant function and it is multiplied with another constant function, you again get a constant function, right? And it is what kind of a function? It is again differentiable because individually the constant functions were differentiable, right? So even their product is differentiable. Similarly, if you take a polynomial function and you add it with another polynomial function, you take the sum with other polynomial function. Even those polynomial functions because one is continuous and differentiable, the other is also differentiable, so their sum will also be differentiable. That is what we mean by the point number 5. Next point is regarding the trigonometric and the inverse trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions and the inverse trigonometric functions like sin x, cos x, like sin inverse x, cosecant inverse x and so on, these functions are also differentiable. But where are they differentiable? in their respective domains because we know that some values are restricted not in case of sine and cos but definitely yes in case of cosecant because if I say cosecant x is 1 by sine x and what is cosecant 0 it is not defined so 0 will not be a domain of cosecant so that is why I say that in the respective domains of trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions only these functions will be differentiable. Next point number 7 into picture, it says the composition of functions. Suppose I have one function which is differentiable and I have another function which is again differentiable. The composition of these two differentiable functions will also be differentiable. That means I have one function differentiable, I have another function differentiable, their composition 
is also differentiable. That is what is said. Composition of function that is differentiable. That means differentiable functions composition is also differentiable. It will also give me a differentiable function. So you have to keep these seven points in mind and you have to keep the seven points in mind. Why? Because we will be solving our questions with ease when we know these seven points. We don't have to solve them, calculate them all over again. Directly we can say if there is a constant function, it is differentiable. Directly I can say if there is a polynomial function, it is differentiable and so on.